Let's talk about these TMG guitars that we've had for two weeks now. They were delivered to us the day that we recorded our last couple episodes. That's true. And so we've had two weeks to kind of mess around with them. Well, I've had a lot of time to mess around with them. Steve, unfortunately, has not had too much time. Uh, Co, you had a little time to mess around with uh, one of them. Yeah, I got to play with the Telecaster a yeah. few minutes ago. Well, the, the model is the Gatton. Yes. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's not a Telecaster, Co. <laughs> it's a Gatton. Even though it is what I would consider probably the truest representation of a Telecaster that I've ever played. Right. Because uh, every other Telecaster I've played has been like, oh, well, this one's got a humbucker. Or, oh, this one's got a different bridge on it. Or, well, you know, yeah. my Telecaster has a strap pickup in the neck. And like a hot Seymour Duncan custom in yeah. the bridge uh, humbucker, and then my other Telecaster is a PV with like noiseless singles in it. So yeah, definitely neither of those are traditional. Yeah, every Telecaster I've come in contact with has had something not standard about it. I mean, the Telecaster that I owned had like a Tisco pickup in the neck, <laughs> and that was the closest I had to an actual regular Telecaster because it had a Telecaster bridge pickup. But you know, uh, let's let's talk about these. What are, sure. What, well, let let's get you know kind of the, I I suppose the elephant in the room. Some people were like, oh, they didn't they didn't talk about they didn't ask Jonathan any of the hard questions. Well, that wasn't really the point. Yeah, it was um, it was we were giving him a forum to kind of tell his story. Yeah, so we we kind of uh, we've kind of been talking to him, and you know, these are these are assembly guitars. That that's not a bad thing. A lot. No. Of, a lot of big companies do it. Well, every guitar needs uh, to be assembled eventually. Sure, right. sure. But, you know, as of right now, TMG isn't cutting the bodies and necks in-house. That's something that it sounds like they are uh, working towards eventually. Uh-huh. Well, um, it sounds like they're working towards doing their own finishing. Right. I'm not... I Did he say that they're not cutting the bodies and necks? Uh, maybe it's just the finishing, the yeah, finishing think, and aging. I think the finishing is a thing that he said that they're not doing in house, but there's good reason for that because you can't spray nitro in California. But they're, right. Though now that they're in Oregon, like that's something that they can develop. Sure. Sure. Um, but, but you still have, to, I think you still have to have the proper facilities to do it. Right. So, you know, these are being sourced from some pretty substantial companies. Though, sure. So pretty, I, we don't have specifics on names, um, but things that you see thrown around on the web or like places like MJT and Music Craft, uh, and like you, I don't think they use USA Customs custom guitars, but that's another like high end kind of like parts caster. Sure, sure. Again, but, part, parts caster is not a fair term because these are like spec'd things, like to, yeah. to I mean, the TMG. Spec. They're not ordering the stock things that these companies offer. They're they're sending templates over. They're sending specs over and getting something specifically made for their brand, right? Uh, versus what you what us the consumer would do if we were building a parts caster, where we'd just be like, oh, what does WD have? What does exactly Warmoth have that I can slap into something? It's not like that at all. They're they're getting necks built to spec. They're getting bodies built to spec, finishings to spec. Right. So are we talking about the Gatton first? Um, you want to talk about the other one? So we also got a Ronnie Scott in Fiesta Red, which is their offset body. Well, the Ronnie Scott is, it was made by Antonio, which is right. the old owner. And the Gatton was made by, uh, by Jonathan, the new owner. Um, <laughs> so one of the lights is freaking out in here. This house is haunted. Yeah. There's a ghost <laughs> in here. Slimer. Is that you? Something in the wires. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, how do we, how do we want to talk about this? What do we want to uh, say? Let's talk about the Gatton first, I guess. Okay. Uh, I mean, both of these guitars are spec similarly in terms Just, of you. You know, read this. Quality. Well, that's what I've got. Up. All right. So read this. Gonna... Let's read the specs for both of them, and then we'll talk about both. <laughs> of them. All right. So the Gatton is a rosewood fretboard on rock maple neck with a ten inch radius and a medium C uh, shaped neck. Uh, it's double bound. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really uh, pretty. Beautiful double bound body. It's a V spec. A Callahan bridge with uh, 1952 TMG spec pickup. So it's the 52 spec, the classic Telecaster style pickups. Uh -huh. And it came with the G and G case, uh, which I mean, G and G makes a high end case. Yeah, the case uh, is really nice. And a mint three ply guard, pick guard. Yeah, in mint. The uh, the color is mint. Yes, the condition is worn in. 
<laughs> oh <my laughs> the uh, TMG Ronnie Scott we had was in Fiesta Red with a swamp ash body, rosewood fretboard on rock maple. Um, to do 10 inch radius, medium C neck, and with a Callaham hardtail bridge for Bigsby, a big uh, B5 Bigsby uh, vibrato on it, a Callum Bigsby upgrades, and TMG spec P90s. So the whoever's making the pickups for them, they're winding the pickups and developing the pickups to like a specific yeah sound. And again, that comes also with the G and G uh, case. Yeah, the cases are really fantastic. I was I was really impressed by them. Really, really pretty. The uh, material that's inside, you kind of get like a uh, you know like a, a Pulp Fiction effect when you open up. Oh the, my gosh. The case for the Gatton, where it's all gold inside, and it just like cast this gold shine on your face and you're like oh i didn't get is, to see the case is that oh is that what i think it is <laughs> you know um i've been having these have been kind of living at my house uh we already sent the ronnie scott uh to its next oh, destination yeah steve just opened it, up the it's case. even got tmg embroidered in the case yeah it's really pretty it's nice it's got the little packet in there to make it fresh <laughs> do not eat i like the the handles really nice on it the details are really nice um so yeah I, let, let, let's ask this question steve from your perspective do you think these guitars are worth their price do you think they're do you th i'm not gonna ask you that i'm not gonna ask you that because you probably have a controversial <laughs> I opinion do. on that do, do you think that these guitars are comparable to other guitars at this price range I don't know because I haven't played a lot of three thousand dollar guitars. <laughs> um, it, you know, it's really hard to say. I will say that these guitars are definitely uh, very well built. Yes, uh, they're kind of. I mean, we talked about this a couple episodes ago. That like for myself personally, I don't know that I, I have a developed enough touch because so much, so many of the guitars I play are either weird, right, or cheap, or both. Um, that. And also, I play the bass mostly. Sure. Uh, that it's hard for me to, to say, like, oh, this definitely feels like a $3,000 guitar. But at the same time, like, the point, just the level of detail that has gone into, like, the finishing and just everything about the way that it's put together, like, it definitely doesn't feel like something you would walk into Guitar Center and just pick off the shelf. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's definitely, like, a unique instrument. Um, one thing that we both talked about uh, with this is that um, the more I played it, the more I liked it. Absolutely. Like, I think when I first picked up, because the Gatton got here first, it beat the uh, the Ronnie Scott in the in the mail race. For some reason, they... they well, like three hours. Yeah, for some reason, they sent the guitars, one through the United Postal Service and one through FedEx, and the Postal Service super won. Yeah. Like, the Postal Service, and they shipped them out at the same time. The Postal Service got here at like 10 o'clock in the morning and the and FedEx got here at like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. What you don't know is that Postal Service was supposed to get there the day before. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Obama, yeah. don't kill me. But I... <laughs> it has uh, nothing to do with it. Like that. right off the bat with, with both the guitars, something that I've noticed with these guitars and, and other guitars in the kind of boutique range that I've picked up at NAMM is that they all have this same kind of fret work. Like they have this kind yeah. of they have this kind of like heavy and blocky on the end fret that at first like kind of freaks me out. Like I'm like, oh, are these frets sharp? Is what's going on here? Because I can really feel them. But then they're not sharp. They're not sticking out the edge of the of the fretboard at all. They're just big and they have a, a like a square cut at the end instead of having like a round cut. Maybe yeah. maybe one of the listeners of the show who is involved in boutique guitars can explain to us the attraction to this, this kind of fret. But at first it was like a turn off to me. But then after a while, like I just adjusted my playing and I guess I could say that I appreciate it now. Like I appreciate that I can sense the fret there, but it's not sharp. It's not cutting me like a cheap guitar would. It's just that I can feel the fret there. Yeah, it's mm. definitely a bigger fret. Right. Totally. It's not, you know, uh I have that Fender Japan uh strat 
Yeah. And it has like the opposite fret. Like it's where the frets that I have are like these super low, yeah, flat frets. Like this is definitely like a bigger uh I don't think it's quite a jumbo fret, but it's definitely like on the th- it's on the of, bigger it's, side it's as far as frets beefy. go. But I noticed the same fret when we were going around Nam on uh like Roni's guitars, Cowers right. guitars. Uh I th- I feel like I they were on like Tom Anderson's guitars. Uh, yeah, that actually is a I think Tom I feel like Tom Anderson might use a thinner yeah fret, but it one has that's that same similar height. That same cut on it. Yeah. Uh and then there was someone else I was thinking about earlier. I can't remember. There's there's a couple of other guitar brands at NAM that had the same exact thing going on. I was like, what is going on? Because I had always been like, oh, you want to just not even feel your frets at all. And that's yeah. like the ideal. And there's guitars that I own and other guitars I've played that have that and guitars I own that don't have that, obviously. So it's kind of been a little bit of mind bender for me trying to figure out what the deal is with that. Uh, other than that, I love the 10 inch radius on these necks. Both of the guitars played very similar to each other because they I, both have the 10 inch radius. I know you felt like the 10, I, you were mentioned that you, at first the 10 inch radius seemed a little off to you. At first, cause, cause it was like, oh, what's different about this guitar? Right. And then it was just like, why am I playing so fast? <laughs> <laughs> you know? for, for me, because I play so much acoustic. Uh-huh. I don't know what my acoustic is radius at, but then a lot of my guitars are nine five, except for that strat that I have, which I think is a twelve inch radius. Is it? Jeez, uh, yeah, it's that's why I didn't let you play that guitar because you were too busy noodling. Oh, is it that the Japanese? The one? Japanese one. Yeah. I gave that to you for like one, a couple practices back when we were playing it uh-huh. in in the band, and you would you wouldn't sing the songs. You would just be like soloing through all of the yeah. vocal parts <laughs> flat radiuses are dangerous with me because i just start to get really shreddy and i i uh get distracted by it yeah so th- i need i need a guitar to have a little bit of a, a little bit of curve on the radius for me to, to slow do the right Rock. thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah i felt like the uh i felt like the 10 inch felt really good to me yeah yeah it's a it's uh, a nice it's a little bit quicker than what you expect from a fender style guitar but it's not over the top. Right. Yeah. Compound radius time, man. 10 to 16. Yeah. So there's been some question, uh, like, is the, are the guitars the same now that Jonathan is basically taking over the company and the original owners are not involved anymore? Uh, what was your impression with the Ronnie say, Scott versus I mean, the Gatton? If, you close, if I close my eyes and, like, I couldn't, it was just hanging on me. I couldn't feel the body shape. The necks are identical. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, they're both the same shape. There's the same radius fretboards. They feel the same. Uh, they feel both felt really comfortable. They're both like same kind of fretwork. Uh, I don't know the way the neck finishing process works on these. Uh huh. Um, because I just don't know anything about neck finishing. Um, but the necks both have like a raw raw type of finish to it. Well, so it's worn in. The, the, both of the guitars are are heavily relic, not heavily, but pretty decently relic. Right, but the but the neck is like it's that particular style of like the the raw neck. Right, but at the same time, it's not like I don't other raw I just necks, don't know how to describe it. Other raw necks I've played have have like a gummy thing, like right? A, like a little sticky. Well, these feel like velvety. Yeah, I have two guitars where the finish on the neck has probably been sanded down. Um, that are smooth, but you can tell they're raw. Yeah. This neck looks raw and it feels dry, but at the same time, like velvety is a good description. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel raw. Like somebody sanded it down it and it doesn't feel like a satin finish. It, I guess maybe it feels like a satin finish that somebody like they did a satin finish and then they like rubbed it with a pillow for like <laughs> a week straight. Like, you know what I mean? No, they, you know what they did is they polished the neck with a puppy. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, for lack of a better description, like that's kind of, that's yeah. kind of, it feels like, uh, I don't know, something really smooth like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, like I don't something really smooth. That Shut up. That Steve can't think of. <laughs> um, as far as differences between 
uh, the the guitar produced by Antonio and the original owners, and the guitar produced by Jonathan. A couple things that I noticed are just like kind of minute details. The uh, the Gatton, which is the newer one, doesn't have the the neck plate on it isn't aged, and I'm sure that's mm. just a sort of thing where if you want that you can order it. Maybe the person that this guitar is going to didn't want the aged. Neck you got plate. somebody else's guitar. Uh, these guitars are going to people. Huh. Yeah. So the the uh, the Ronnie Scott I think is already at its destination. Like it went up to Bad Cat Bad Cat amps oh, okay. for them to try it out a little bit, and then there's the guy uh, that is going to own it. I think he has received it already or is about to. And then this one, we're, when we get the shipping slip, it is going to its new owner. Nice. Um, another thing, the nuts seemed either to be a different material or to be aged differently. Again, not really an issue, like guitar to guitar. Um, other than that, other than the fact that it's got a different name badge on it because the name of the company has changed slightly, and it's uh, the application is a little different of the, the, the tag on the headstock. These guitars feel very similar to me. They definitely feel like they're coming from the same manufacturer. Sure. It doesn't feel like, oh, this is one company and here's another. They're the same company as far as I can tell. The pickups both uh, are very nice sounding pickups to my ear. Uh, yeah. But we kind of mentioned earlier with the Gatton that it's uh, a true Telecaster. And that was something that I kind of had to adjust to because the bridge pickup is like super bright. Right. In a way. And I would just say this about this guitar overall. And it's something that that is kind of... I think a mantra for high-end guitars in general uh -huh. is a high-end guitar is not going to make you a better guitarist. No. If whoa, anything, whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, right? <laughs> if anything, like at least in the case, if that's of, not going to make me a better guitarist, then what will? Okay. <laughs> I, I feel. I feel like for me it, with the Gatton, it kind of exposed a lot of like my flaws. Okay. Uh, in the sense that like the bridge pickup and the neck pickup are very different. Uh -huh. So if I try to play the bridge, like, I would say that normally I probably don't put a ton of variance in my playing style pick up to pick up on the same guitar. Sure. But with this guitar, like, I really had to pay attention because if I tried to play the bridge pickup the same way I played the neck pickup, it was just, like, ice picky blowing me out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, I, I mean, you I could probably EQ that out, but it was sure. something where where I just noticed that, like, that these pickups are extremely touch sensitive. Yeah. Well, they're very Telecaster-y. But mm -hmm. uh, compared to other Telecasters I've played, I think these are... I mean, obviously the, the bridge pickup is bright, but it's not ice picky compared to other Telecasters no, I've played. Well, you like, know, I think it's, it's got a good punch to it. It's got a good mid punch to yeah, it. Yeah, I guess ice picky maybe isn't the right word because even when it was like super bright it still yeah. had a lot of bottom end and it responds really well to uh the the tone knob on there yeah i don't know what kind of cap they have in there but it, it's it's a nice sounding one uh, i think they are using emerson okay. electronics so mm. that's what uh, that's the 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 thing that people are all excited about these days so. yeah um the right. ronnie scott you didn't get to play it a lot I had it here for about a week, I think, before uh -huh. it, before we had to send it on its way. Uh, I really, really liked that guitar. I thought the Ronnie Scott was really a lot of fun. It's just, I thought it was just a really classic yeah, all but around. Yeah, Bigsby on an offset. I know. Right? It, <laughs> I thought it was just a really great all around kind of rocker guitar. Right. I really liked. At first, I I was kind of put off by the bridge because it kind of had like a Telecaster saddle sort of thing. Instead of oh, having yeah. a standard offset bridge that kind of moves with the tremolo use. Right. But, you know, that thing was, with a lot of tremolo use, it was it was dead stable. I was barely having to tune that thing in between jam sessions. Uh, I really loved the color on that guy. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, I loved that Fiesta Red. I loved the little checking and the, the cracks and the relic. Um, I'm not even really a big relic guy. But I, I really liked the uh, like the temperature cracks that the, that that thing had going through it. Yeah. Um, the pickups were great. They sounded 
like I was saying with the Telecaster, they sounded kind of punchy. They didn't sound overly bright. Yeah. I feel like they were maybe a little bit hot for my taste, though. Well, P90s. Yeah, so. I don't own anything with P90s, so it might just be like I'm not used to them. But I was... It was pushing the the low strings on it were pushing my amp a little harder than I would have liked. Right, and that could have been remedied by me doing my own setup on it, as far as like moving the pickups around or whatever. Uh, but that's just personal taste stuff. I think the vast majority of any issues that I've had with these guitars have been personal taste stuff. Sure, I could have raised the action on the Gatton and been a little bit happier with it, but I didn't. I was lazy. I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> um, just because it's set up to be so fast right now and so low, I right. prefer to have a little bit more of a push against my strings so I don't go crazy on the <laughs> shreddy stuff. <laughs> There's always a temptation there for me to get too shreddy. Right. And I have to just uh, do whatever it takes. Problem. You don't have that problem? No. You never want to get too shreddy? Well, I couldn't even if I wanted to. <laughs> that's the problem. You with, wouldn't. That's you the problem couldn't. with our demo videos is like, Ryan's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I'm just going to noodle for 10 yeah. minutes. What you're doing right there? My noodling doesn't sound that good. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that, you have like a little classical piece there. I oh, my gosh. I wish I could noodle that good. I <laughs> just um, wish you'd play some chords. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we want to say about these guitars? Uh, I'll give my know. experience from the sure. two and a half minutes sure. I had on that Gatton. Yeah. First thing I noticed, it felt solid. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's a big deal for me. I like guitars to feel like they're not going to break when I touch them. Totally. Um, Because I slam strings hard with a pick. (laughs) I I broke my low E on my bass on a couple different occasions. (laughs) Damn, dude. That's what I do. And this felt like it could handle that. (laughs) Yeah, it feels really robust. The the neck feels really solid in the the pocket. Yeah. Uh, I've really enjoyed the sustain of these guitars. And I'm not usually someone who's like, cork sniffing sustain but i was just right in the videos i haven't edited the videos yet but maybe i'll get a part in there where i just hold a chord and let it ring and it felt like it just it wasn't like the notes ringing but just the warmth of the strum continued throughout for like a long period of time it almost felt like when you like hit a a, a note on the piano and let it sustain right like after the note is gone there's just like that low rumble in the piano you might body. be able to hear it right now still oh it's still going I, we can hear it <laughs> but uh, it's, that's i i can genuinely say that's the first time where i've been like whoa this is an interesting sustain dynamic with a guitar like my other guitars i don't spend any time thinking about that uh i really like the weight of the body on the gatton mm-hmm. it yeah. feels really light but but solid and and very like substantial i don't know how to yeah. describe it no like, it's definitely uh it's definitely well put together i mean it was made to be held and played yeah totally it's a it, player's guitar yeah it's not it's not meant to be babied yeah. really is sure, what it feels sure. like it's not meant to be i mean it's already it's already relic like right it all yeah. already looks like someone's been playing it a long time yeah <laughs> So what have you got to lose? Just play this thing. Go but I, I think that's really the attraction to these guitars is that they are players guitars with some premium features uh, and a premium feel. You know, I've, I've said before and we've talked about before that the difference between, you know, like an $800 guitar and a $3,000 guitar is really like single digit percentage. Sure. You know? It's like 5%, 4% better. But if you're a professional musician or or someone who really cares and you have the budget, that percentage, you it makes all the difference to you. Yeah. You know? Uh, you can get similar sounds from a uh, from the Mexican guitar if you drop the right pickups in there, mm-hmm. but it's not going to feel the same. It's not going to have the the same pride of ownership, I guess. Right. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, so I can see the value in these guitars. I'm probably never, ever going to spend this kind of money on a guitar. And it's been a little trippy having these guitars around the house. Right. Just because it's like, oh my gosh, I hope my house doesn't burn down because <laughs> I've got these very expensive guitars in the house. and <laughs> Maybe the insurance won't cover it. I don't know. When, yeah. when, you know, it's like the house is worth more than the guitars, but still I'm nervous because it's like all my guitars are maybe worth $7,000 
together. If I put them all together, right. and these two guitars together are worth seven thousand dollars, just yeah. hanging around in my house. I, I'm currently saving up to get high end boutique guitar. Are you? Yeah, I I was sold. On, Do you have one in mind? Oh yeah. What are you gonna get? Uh, I'm gonna get a Paul Roney Oceana. Oh, I, I sat fancy. Well, okay, I sat down with the, his Vireo at uh-huh. Nam, and it was one of those aha moments. Like a guitar can feel like this. Yeah, yeah. It feels like it belongs. Yeah, totally. To me, like in me. <laughs> in you? Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. In, in hey, my buddy. hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I, <laughs> wait, wait. Did you say in your hands or in your pants? In my hands. Oh, Steve, okay. Steve is blushing over there. <laughs> No, that, that's because I'm Asian. It's called an Asian glow. It's a thing that happens when we drink. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> Learned about that, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm saving. I mean, I keep getting distracted by pedals and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little slow saving process, but sure. it, it's going to happen. Yeah, totally. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be at that place. I hope that someday I get lined up with, you know, my dream guitar, whatever that happens to be at the at the moment, like my dream guitar was the the Hallmark Swiftwing, and I have that now. So it's like I'm not even thinking about my dream guitar anymore. Right, you know? yeah. I guess my dream guitar right now is would be one that I would build from scratch, and then I would be upset at how awful it is. And then I've I, got a bunch, and of... then I would spend three grand on a custom guitar from someone else. <laughs> I've got a bunch of garbage wood in my backyard because I just took apart an entertainment center. Uh-huh. Nice. It's, uh, I guess you just took apart a deck, so you might have more garbage wood <laughs> oh, around I've here. I've got a bunch of uh, deck a, wood. A reclaimed, reclaimed guitar. There yeah, you go. It's, it's been made. It's, it's pre-chambered by termites, <laughs> 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 which might actually be a fun sound, you know? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? All right, so I, th- I mean, I think the bottom line here is I think there's a couple take-home points. One is that, like, this, these are legit high-quality guitars. Yeah. Uh, I... Any, I, I think that any criticism that is out there cons, concerning the quality of these guitars is just internet rumor. Right. It's. I think these stand up just fine against any other three to four thousand dollar guitar I've played. Sure. Uh, as far as quality, sound, playability goes, uh, fit and finish of of the details, I think they hold up just fine against anything. Uh, I definitely hold up better than the vast majority of stuff you'll find in your guitar center. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. So I don't, you know, Jonathan came to us to kind of set the story straight with his story, uh, concerning him becoming the owner of the guitar company. He sent us these guitars to review. I think, I think they're great. I think any, like I said, any internet rumor, those are just rumors. If you're curious about these guitars, Talk to Jonathan. Maybe there's someone in the area he can connect you with. Yeah, do you remember what the, the contact info is for them? Is it info at tmgguitarco.com? It's something similar to that. Just search for TMG Guitar Co. And you'll find the website on yeah, your Google. Yeah, the website has an email. Uh, this, If you're listening to this because you're watching the YouTube demo, um, the email will be in the description. Sure. And eventually. If you, and if you're <laughs> just listening on the podcast, we'll probably have the email in the description of the podcast. Yeah. Why not, right? Uh, I'll probably forget. That's why not. <laughs> <laughs> if Steve forgets, then write us and we'll get you that link. Yeah, for sure. 